Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to be doing a speed test on the Arduino Zero's built-in DAC function versus a more customized function. We see here that the built-in function called analog write generates a 1.37 kilohertz sine wave when it's iterating through a table. Using a customized analog write command that we'll be generating, we generate a 3.6 kilohertz wave. That's a pretty significant improvement. So in this video, we're going to explore why we can get a much better result by modifying the built-in function. Here are both sine waves compared to each other. The top is the built-in function, and the bottom is the more customized function that's optimized for speed to generate this sine wave. To compare apples to apples, we need to do the same write operation for the built-in versus customized analog write function. So to do this, we're going to generate the sine wave using a lookup table. And that's why we did on the first line include signlookup.h. Let's go ahead and take a look at that header file to see how we're generating this sine wave. We create this header file to better organize our code and for reuse. The main function of this sign lookup header file is to create an array of stored values that will create a sine wave because the DAC will create voltages based upon these inputs. These inputs will ultimately be used to scale the output voltage. In this case, it's going to be 8-bit values. Let's go ahead and go to the void loop function, which is our main program. Its purpose is to determine which value we want to select, either the built-in or custom DAC write function. We'll first focus on the default analog write function. In line 18, we have int i equals 0. That's going to initialize our index that we're going to use in the sine wave lookup table. Then we have line 19, int value equals 0, which is going to be the actual value that's going to be in that lookup table. So that will be used to scale the digital to analog converters output. Line 21 and 22 are used to see if the user inputted a value and then to read that value. So if serial available is greater than zero, meaning the user inputted something into the serial monitor, then we want to read that value and we're going to assign it to user input. And we do that by doing serial.read. So to get us to use the default analog write function, the user would have to input the lowercase b. And that's what the if statement in line 24 is looking for. Then if that happens, we go into line 25, the while true loop. So this will run continuously until we restart the Arduino. And that's done by while and in parentheses 1. Line 26, value equals sine wave at the index i. So when we imported the lookup table at the top, we simply can reference those values. We treat it as if it was an array defined in the body of this main code. However, we know we imported it. So we just have to reference the right name, which was defined in the sign lookup table. So here in line 27 is the default analog write function. And this comes when you install with your Arduino IDE and you set up the write libraries for your Arduino Zero. You see here, this function takes in two parameters here. The first is the pin. And the second argument here is value. Value is the current value of the sine wave lookup table. So as you can see here, this is really simple. It's two lines of code. We first need to determine what the value is, and then we need to pass that value to the analog write function, as well as what pin to output to. Then I did this pretty explicitly, but I did in lines 29 through 31, it defines how to reset the index. Line 29 is i equals i plus 1, so that simply increments our index. And if i equals 256, then we want to reset that index. Because there are a total of 256 values to iterate through. We start counting at 0, so after we get to 255, the next increment would exceed the limit of the boundary of the array. So the last value in the sine wave lookup table is 255, 
in terms of its position in the array. So when it equals to 256, we reset it back to zero. The result using the built-in analog write is a 1.366 kilohertz sine wave. So we reviewed the built-in analog write function. Now let's see what we can do to optimize for speed. In line 36, we do a check to see if the user inputs S. So this will initiate us into a while true loop of a more optimized code set. That hits the while true loop in line 38. And in line 39, we assign the value just like we did previously by sine wave at the index of I. Now we hit the new commands. What we're doing here is boiling down this code set to the essential elements we need to be able to provide the DAC, the value we need to write, and then actually writing that value. I actually got this code from the default analog write function. If we take a moment to look at it, it'll help put the context to what we're actually doing here. This is where the built-in function is defined in the wiring analog.c file. So this is the source code used to support this digital to analog converter. And there's a lot of good information in here that we can customize our function based upon our needs. Now, my goal here was to make a more optimized and speedy function. So what that means is I wanna be able to iterate through that sign lookup table faster than what this current function here displayed can do. Generally speaking, these default functions that come with the Arduino IDE are made for flexibility because this pin can be configured to do different things. So this code supports multiple different applications. And for our case where we want speed to be optimized, it's not exactly ideal because there's a lot of overhead. If we reduce the amount of if statements and code here that's unnecessary, then we can iterate through the table faster. You have to think, the Arduino Zero, like every other kind of microcontroller and processor, has a fixed amount of time it needs to execute instructions. Eventually the C code gets boiled down into machine code. Well, when we add code to do checks like these if statements and other things, this actually causes more delay because it needs to execute that code each time we iterate through that sign lookup table. So every time analog writes called, this set of code gets executed. We do the if statements, and then we go into the code that actually supports the DAC interface. That's not to say this is bad code. This is actually great code, especially given what it's supposed to intended to do, because it gives more flexibility to the user depending on their application. So it's up to us to have the knowledge to understand what's going on and the default values and it's a great opportunity to use code that's already developed to understand what's going on and then refining it for our applications. And that's the beauty of the open source nature of the Arduino platform. So with that being said, let's take a quick overview of what's going on in this analog write function and see what we can do to strip out what's absolutely needed so we can get a more expedient output. I'll stick to higher level explanations just so we get the idea and premise of this code. The first line of code assigns the pin that we're going to be using. The next line of code is a variable that helps us assess whether this DAC pin is set up properly. What the two if statements below do is make sure that we're set in the right mode for that specific application. So let's just say that the pin was configured wrong. It would hit the first if statement, then go to the second. And you can notice here, just looking at the variable names, if it's not an ADC channel, and if it's not configured as a DAC channel, then we return. So what's that gonna do? That's just gonna kick us out, and we're not gonna continue and ask the Arduino to do something it's not configured to do. This is one if statement that we don't necessarily need, because we know what our application is, and we know that the pin is gonna be configured properly because we, we don't want flexibility in terms of its functionality. We simply want it to be the digital to analog converter output channel. So that is one if statement that we can remove. And in fact, we can re remove the two lines above it. That leaves us with 
the value assignment. Notice the value gets assigned using map resolution. Here's a definition of map resolution. And notice in the default analog write function, this is hard coded to 10. Now in the static inline map resolution definition there, you can see you get the value to and from. The to and from values are the bit resolutions. So what happens is if it's bigger or smaller, it'll shift accordingly based upon the if statement. And if it's equal, it just returns the value. Well, we already know the value is gonna be 10, so we don't need this function, and that's just pure overhead that's not necessary for our application and what we're actually trying to do. So we can go ahead and eliminate that. And once we clear that, we're left with what was used in the more optimized DAC writing function. Once the user hits S, we will go through the while true loop. The first line in line 39 gets the value from the current index of the sine wave. Then we do a sync DAC function. And what it does is make sure that the DAC is not busy because it'll indicate that when it is doing some operation and it's not available to receive commands. So we have to make sure the DAC is ready for our instructions. So we'll do that after each separate instruction that we're gonna do in the while true loop. We make sure it's ready and its status is good and then we assign the value to the data register. The data register is 16 bits in total. We mask it because we only wanna look at the first 10 bits. The other bits will be populated with zero and for practical purposes, they're ignored. In line 42, we make sure that our DAC is ready for the next command. And in line 43, we enable the DAC output. The way that we enable the DAC output is through control register A. As we can see by the data sheet description, the enable is on bit one of that register. To enable it, we simply write a one value. And that's what we're doing in line 43. For good measure, we do another sync DAC function, and then we hit the increment the index value just like we did in the default analog write function. We then iterate through this loop and continuously write these values. So this DAC will convert the digital value that was loaded into the data register, and then we enable it. So that's how we put the output voltage on the pin. So if we see that, if we can distill the instructions to the DAC down to a simpler form, we can increase the output speed. There's still room for improvement here. Like for example, the sync DAC in line 44 isn't completely necessary, but I left it in there because it's truer to the default form. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you learned more about how you can speed up your digital to analog converter output. Stay tuned for more content and let me know what you think in the comments section.